What is up everyone? It is Ozzy from Ozzy Hardware and here with me today I have one of the best budget CPUs you can get on the market right now. I want you guys to meet this little guy, the Xeon X3450, a $25 i7 alternative that's housing four cores and eight threads. So Intel released the X3450 in 2009 with their Xeon lineup. And now the Xeon lineup are more or less glorified i7s that are higher binned and have better server support and a few extra features added on there. Now this X3450 for 50 released in the third quarter of 2009 it has a 95 watt tdp a 2.66 gigahertz stock clock and has eight megabytes of l3 cache it is also running on the lga 1156 socket so this cpu debuted for 241 dollars eight years ago right now you can get it for about 30 bucks on ebay and it's often found a lot cheaper than that if you guys have been around my channel for a little bit, you would know that I used this CPU in my $250 gaming computer competition, where me and a few other YouTube friends built our own computers for $250 or less and battled them against one another. Now this CPU did pretty well in that competition, so I thought, you know, maybe I should pair it up against a much stronger GPU and see how well it performs there. I also added a Skylake i7 just for pretty normal comparison. So just a few disclaimers, the very first one one being that the Skylake build and my build are not going to have identical parts specifically because of their platform. Um, the most noticeable difference is going to be the RAM speed and the RAM type. But considering the circumstances, this is the best I could do. Now shout out to Babbletech for allowing me to use their i7 benchmarks to compare to my Xeon. So I'm running the Xeon at stock and overclocked speeds. I was able to get it to 3.83 gigahertz on air cooling, but because of thermals and throttle I had to cut it down quite a bit. So I left turbo on, I realized that that's the best way to overclock this ship, and I got 3.3 reference and 4.0 at turbo boost. So without any further ado, let's go right into the benchmarks. So I first tested out Doom using OpenGL. Vulkan was an option, but I don't have a benchmarking suite for Vulkan or DirectX 12 just yet, so OpenGL was the way to go. The Xeon kept a 46 FPS average, but dipped down to the 20s here and there. A bottleneck is apparent when compared to the Skylake CPU. Overclocking definitely gives it a noticeable jump in performance though, about 10 FPS average. Next up, Far Cry Primal. Now the X3450 is definitely closer to the i7 here, but the difference is still very apparent, almost 40%. Overclocking also worked noticeably in the Xeon's favor, adding 11% on average and preventing dips below 30 FPS. GTA is definitely the biggest display and bottleneck of all the games tested. The Xeon barely made it over 30 FPS on stock and dipped below the threshold often. Overclocking didn't help much either. The CPU only gained a couple FPS after a 700 MHz boost. The X3450 presented similar bottlenecks in Hitman. The i7 takes a noticeable lead and keeps it even with a nice bump in GHz on the Xeon. At least you have a small victory in the minimums, as now the CPU is able to maintain 30 FPS 100% of the time. Metro Last Light Redux, a more graphically dependent game, gives the Xeon some breather room as the CPU is able to stay within the margin of error of the Skylake counterpart. There is a day and night difference in the minimums though, more than 100% actually. Overclocking the Xeon gives it a massive boost as it now averages over 100 FPS. I'm personally guessing this is a glitch, but I ran the benchmark twice and yielded similar results. Lastly, we have Shadow of Mordor. The Xeon keeps up easily with the i7 at both stock and overclock speeds. As you can see, the game depends more on the GPU than anything else, allowing the X3450 to keep up with the i7. So now one of my favorite benchmarks, or analyzations rather, is dollar per FPS. Now this is basically just asking, how much are you paying for each frame that is rendered on your computer? Well with the i7-6700K, you're paying about four bucks a frame. With the Xeon X3450, you're paying about 40 cents a frame. That's about a 900% difference between the two. This is why this CPU is a pretty awesome budget-oriented CPU for most. The greatest part about this is the fact that the motherboards are not terribly expensive. You can pick up a generic P55 motherboard for as low as 60 bucks on eBay. But if super cheap Chinese no-name brands are not your style, you can pick up name brand ones for as low as 70 to 75 bucks, which is a pretty good deal considering how much you can get out of the CPU. Now, if you don't want to overclock, you can get cheaper H55 motherboards name brands for as low as 50 bucks. 
So excluding the CPU cooler, you could potentially have yourself an i7 CPU and motherboard combo for as low as 25 bucks and even cheaper if you look around for better deals. So what are my final thoughts? Well, the Xeon X3450 is definitely a great CPU for the price. That's one of its best parts is that you don't have to spend that much money and you get pretty good performance. Now, I wouldn't recommend this unless you have it for very specific situations and those can be pretty much brought down to two scenarios. The first one being if you need something super cheap for heavy number crunching such as using VMs or editing or rendering or if you want to play older games or very GPU dependent games then this CPU can do that for you. If you're not in one of those two boats then I definitely recommend getting something newer as the LGA 1156 platform is pretty much dead at this point and you can get a lot more features using newer platforms. So that is it for this video guys. If you liked it, definitely leave a like and share. And if you loved it, definitely subscribe. I have more videos like this coming out soon. So definitely come back and check me out for future content. Now, I am doing this little segment at the end of each Friday video. And it's basically where I show two to three setups or builds from one of you guys, uh, my subscribers. If you're definitely interested in uh, getting a shout out and having your build shown to the entire universe, basically, then check the Google form in the description. Um, just fill that out and then you would hopefully be on my channel and in a video. So that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed it, again, do all that stuff that I mentioned before. Other than that, see you guys later.